Welcome to the Landscaping Podcast. My name is Joel Barnett and I'm your host. And in today's episode, we've got our very first international guest with David Anderson from Inside Out Design Build. So that's a landscape design and construction company based in Vancouver in Canada. So in this episode, we talk to David, who he's actually got a, a quite a varied international pathway. He uh, was born in South Africa, moved to London in the UK, worked as a landscaper there, and then ended up going to Vancouver where he is now. So he's worked in a couple of different countries doing landscaping. So we talk about the differences with that, as well as how he started out in London with his VW Golf as his work vehicle. So hopefully you enjoy this episode with David Anderson. David, thank you for joining us on the Landscape Podcast and being our first international international guest. <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me. First question for you is how you got into the landscaping industry to start off. Uh, yeah, well, I, I went to um, London straight out of high school just to uh, travel a bit and my brother was already there. So just got odd jobs, you know, with friends and, and things like that. Every time you travel and come back, get a, get a job and a couple of those seemed, uh, ended up being landscaping. Also did some, some sort of construction stuff, but I actually really enjoyed the landscaping. So, yeah, I just, just fell into it really and kind of learned as I went um, and really enjoyed it, especially the uh, more of the, the hardscape side like. Um, building patios and stuff like that I wasn't really big into the plants at first um so yeah more of the I, I just the satisfaction of building something you know and like look standing over it and looking back at it like wow I did that you know um that just appealed to me straight away so yeah just fell into it and, and loved it pretty much from from the beginning so when you said you went to London so you got a South African accent so were you born in South Africa born in South Africa yeah and then um at, at 19 Went to London. A lot of South Africans go to London. You know, oh, it's right. kind of easy for us to get in with ancestry and stuff like that. So uh, I was one of the first of my friends, but eventually most of my friends were over there too. So it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, bit of a bit of a shock to the system, the weather and all that, but kind of get used to it. <laughs> so how, how long were you over there for? Uh, I was in London for 12 years and then moved to uh, Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. All right. And so yeah. did you start a business in London or were you working for someone else? Yeah. Did, you, did they have yeah, an apprenticeship yeah, yeah. system over there? No, no, no apprenticeship system. And it's interesting listening to you guys talk about these sorts of things. It sounds like that's, that's a, a big thing there. And um, yeah, it, it kind of makes me think a lot when I listen to you guys talk about that and the associations and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, no, none of that that I was aware of, at least. I just uh, worked for a few small companies and um, eventually at around, I think, 25, I just thought, why not? Because I tried a few other things, you know, I didn't, I thought oh, I've got to get an office job or something and I just didn't like it. So, you know, I, I kind of thought I want to do my own thing. What's the, what's the best, what have I enjoyed the most up until now? It was definitely landscaping. So I just decided to, um, to do that. So I uh, just went on my own at 25. It didn't need much to do, especially paving and all that. And I've always kind of said that it's quite an easy thing to start up on your own. You just need a wheelbarrow and some tools and you can go for it, you know. So I just put a put some ads up on the Gumtree. I think, you, I don't know if the Gumtrees, you guys have that yep. there? Yep. I think it's like an Aussie thing. I remember it being like a website that travelers and Australians use. Anyway, I put some um, advert on there and someone said, yep, come and do a patio for me. And that's how it kind of started. Cool. So hey, what what just what was the business name to start off with? Uh, it was Anderson Landscapes. So my last name didn't, didn't put yep. much thought into it at all. <laughs> just got that and, and rolled with it. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it was great. I, I just, uh, I, I remember starting out the, the back of my VW Golf, like I didn't even have a truck or a van or anything. I just, <laughs> with, the, with the seats down, I could get the wheelbarrow in with a bunch of tools around it and, uh, you know, park around the corner, <laughs> wheel everything over, pretend like, a, <laughs> pretend like I was a bit more professional than I was. But, you know, I think people knew, you know, if, if they, they kind of knew, young guy, and they're probably going to get a good deal. And as long as the work's good, they, they don't care, you know. Exactly, so, yeah. Yeah. And so how long did you did it take long to put on a staff member? Um, I think I think I might have worked like a year by myself and I was happy doing it. You know, I kind of like working by myself. I still do, the, you know, yeah. just head down and working. But uh, yeah, and I, I got some help. Eventually, it would be like a friend on a weekend or there would be maybe a, a bit longer than that. And, and eventually I ended up having maybe three of us in total, maybe four at the most. Always small. Um but yeah, and then, you know, the jobs kind of, the more you did, the more you'd kind of get seen or, or like maybe there was a designer involved that you didn't know about and then they'd see it afterwards and then they'd all of a sudden, okay, call you directly. Can you do another job for us? So the, the kind of the projects improved gradually and, uh, you know, you kind of build up your portfolio like that. So it was, it was pretty, pretty organic the way it went. 
Yeah. So the guys you worked for, were they doing full landscape packages like the hardscaping and softscaping as well? Is that where you did you learn? Uh, yeah, the, the London company. So uh, yeah, I think back to it a bit and like a lot of them had no idea what they were doing. They just kind of, I remember the one guy, he just was an accountant. He got fed up with it. So he started a landscaping thing and like, we all kind of knew more than him, but we, we didn't know what we were doing either. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> fences without string lines and all sorts of just figuring it out as we went, but we, we learned a lot that way you know, kind of get thrown in the deep end. But yeah, so that one, that company was more um, full packages, but like London. So, you know, the gardens aren't that, aren't that big. So it's not, it's not huge projects often. Yeah. And then I worked for another one that did a bit of maintenance. And that was when I really realized that that's not for me at all. Like it's got to be the, the construction side for sure. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a lot of small businesses that I work for in London. And, and that's kind of, you know, what I just carried on doing except for myself. So was good. How long did you work in London for before you moved to Canada? Uh, so I, did, I, I think I did, a, it was like five or six years of having my own business in London and then I moved to Canada. So I had to start from scratch basically. Um, what was the catalyst behind moving there? Uh, just, we just had enough of London, you know, it's good, it's fun and it's great for traveling and all that, but it, it just, it just didn't seem like the place we wanted to so like settle down and, you know, start a family and all that. So yeah. we had some friends moving to, um, Vancouver were telling us about it um, and we just thought we wanted to give it a give it a shot you just get a one-year visa and see how it goes and we loved it straight away so yeah we're still here no I haven't been there before I've been to either country before but um, as far as I'm aware Vancouver is probably a bit more scenic than London oh yeah <laughs> that's an understatement <laughs> for sure <laughs> yeah it's much better it's it, it's like I, I often tell people it's it's a bit of a, a mix of like the outdoor lifestyle of South Africa different sports because it's more like snow sports and stuff but um and then you know the first world country and all the stuff that works and from the uk so it's like a, it's a really good mix it's a nice place to be for sure and so were you doing any design work when you were in london or how did that all start about was that just organic as well uh yeah that, i wasn't doing any in in london but then when i came here I, I had to join a company um in order to get my permanent residence all that and i joined a big company that had a really good website and portfolio i wanted to get into these um bigger projects with pools and all that sort of stuff. And uh, they didn't have anyone who, uh, they were always subbing out the woodwork. They didn't have anyone who could do decks and stuff. And I said, well, I, I, I can do that. Like I've done a few. I had, I had really only done <laughs> pretty small ground level ones. I hadn't really thought about how big some of them can be out here, like second story decks off the back of a house and stuff. So, but yeah, I put my hand up and said, I'll do them. And um, so I started doing those. And then I, I really thought, well, how can I make these look a bit better? And, and I had a few ideas, but I, I had to kind of, I thought I had to show the, the boss like what it would look like. So I, I found like a, a really basic 3D design software that I could do it with and just show some border details and some you know, inlay patterns that I might do. And uh, yeah, so I kind of learned while I was working there and he was happy for me to play around with it and figure it all out. And I, I really like that. I, I love all the detail, you know, I like getting into that sort of thing. So yeah, kind of learned for, with them and I've, I've carried on doing it. I've uh, noticed that a lot more in the North American uh, decks and patios. There's a lot more of those inlays. Did you, was there any of that you saw in London as well, or do you, is that no, no, none of that? And when I say that, I know what you're talking about. It's uh, I think that's more of like um, interior and and like the colder climates. So I, I don't know if they have to use composites more than hardwoods or something, but they're, they're really into that sort of like deck board bending and and the crisscross patterns and all that. Yeah. I, I didn't. I'm like I appreciate the skill and all that. I'm not really into that myself. I just mean like basic sort of perpendicular boards, like a yeah. class pattern, they call it just to, I, I'm more into the, I, I like the, uh, the hardwoods and just I actually doing some composite stuff now too, but kind of letting uh, the whole package like speak for itself in terms of design, not just the deck. Like I, I think yeah. sometimes you can have too much detail in that. It. It's like, but it needs to go well with everything else. If you know what I mean? So yeah, it's yeah. not really my style, but I really appreciate the skill that those guys have for that. Yeah. And you haven't, so you haven't done any formal design training. You've all just learned on the job. No. Yeah, I all just, just figured it out myself. And then um, when I was working for that company, it was one of the guys who, who knew how to use SketchUp. And I kind of found out about it and I asked him for some pointers. And it didn't really take long at all to just get the basics and then get going with that. And, and that's been the best because when you really want to focus in on detail for the woodwork side of things, like you can, you can go as detailed as you want on that too. You know, that other software I was talking about, it would round everything to the nearest inch. So it was more like for a concept and a sort of general design of a yard. But if you wanted to zoom in and get really detailed on your on your deck board layout or privacy screens or pergolas and all that, 
uh, SketchUp is way better for that. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big SketchUp fan. Still, yeah. I've been using it maybe five years now, but I, I still feel like I've only just scratched the surface. There's so much you can do with it. Yeah, like a lot of things, you don't use it as all of the um, all the parts of it that you could use. Yeah. So do you do yeah. do you do three D designs with that as well? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been using. I don't use that other one. I've stopped using that quite a while ago. Yeah. Definitely SketchUp for me. I'm kind of I've learned the process now to do some sort of uh, more of a basic two D at first and then converting it to 3d but you know when i was starting to my own thing here um i was doing 3d designs almost straight away too soon almost you know like before i knew i even had the job but i was just trying to show people like this is what it could be like and, and hopefully sell jobs that way but now i'm luckily i'm able to charge for it now but at, at first i wasn't you know a bit of a gamble yeah. but i guess you don't really uh you don't i don't know if you deserve to charge mm, if you don't have any sort of, sort of like design trying. experience you kind of prove yourself first and then people like it and people inquire because of it and then you know all of a sudden you can start charging for it so yeah so, exactly you can't, can. you can't go out <laughs> charging big dollars when you don't even know we're doing yourself exactly yeah <laughs> you're kind of doing it as a test run like i think it's going to look yeah. good let's try this oh it does look good great okay good on to the yep. next one <laughs> so how long did you work with that company you started for in vancouver uh four years actually and i didn't think i would be there that long i i thought as soon as i can i'm going to start my own thing but it was it was really good. It's a, a company. They've got like I think maybe eighty staff, so it's a, a big company. Oh, they do a lot of commercial stuff. I'm not really into that, but yep. uh, it was just really good way to um, meet a lot of people in the industry and, and kind of uh, network. So it, it's a, a small enough city that everyone kind of knows everyone. Uh, so from that, I, I just feel like I have so many conversations with suppliers and landscape architects, and everyone knows someone from one of the companies you worked at. So. I kind of like that. It was, it was not like that at London at all. Uh, it's just too massive, you know. You're yeah. in your little pocket of a sort of area of London and it's not really, you don't really know other companies that much. At least I didn't, you know. What's the population of Vancouver? Oh, it's uh, a good question. I actually don't know. I know in like the, they've got all the suburbs so that but Vancouver itself is quite small. Uh, and I think it's like 600,000 people live in that. And then in greater Vancouver, I think it's like three or four million. I, I don't actually know. I should look that up. I should know, yeah, I guess. Right. But yeah, yeah, you know, like London's 10 plus or whatever it was. It's yeah. just massive. Yeah. Uh, so Vancouver's nice. It's like, I'm from Durban in South Africa, so it feels like that sort of size, you know, not too yeah. big. You know, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can go anywhere kind of thing. Yeah. So what did the, um, after four years, how did you go about starting out your own? Did you have um, any work lined up or? Not really. And uh, how did that happen? I, I think I had a, I had a guy who was doing uh, construction side of thing and he knew I wanted to do my own thing. So he, he had a few little small jobs here and there to do, you know, nothing massive. And I just slowly did a few small things with him, decks here and there. And you got, yeah, I almost needed to um, just build up a portfolio a little bit because I couldn't really rely on my photos from the UK days. It's like a different style almost I, I was trying to use those on instagram but it wasn't really fooling anyone it's clearly not vancouver so yeah. it took a while to build up the portfolio again and then you kind of get momentum with it i guess so instagram was amazing for that because you could just put the photos on there and then you know if you get i, I find if i if i get a lead through instagram people that have been following for a while it's it's such a good lead you know you're already in a really good position for those so yeah and did you notice is there a huge difference in their techniques comparing London to the UK, uh, to uh, Vancouver, sorry? Um, yeah, what, what are the things, I, when I first moved here, I think the thing that surprised me the most was how all the houses are built out of wood. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it's like there, but it's just like, the, it, it just, it looked like giant sheds going up to me. I, I couldn't believe it, you know. So that obviously doesn't affect the landscaping side of things, but that was the first thing I noticed. And then just different techniques on, um, like I, I would do a lot of block wall, sort of retaining walls and planter beds that would then get a render mix over it and paint it or something. That doesn't seem to be so popular here at all. It's, it's all like uh, poured in place. So formed formed walls and then it's poured concrete. It's so like an architectural finish or or sometimes not architectural and then they just clad tiles over it or something like that. Um, so yeah, like I actually, I, th I think the block work, it should be more popular here because especially if you're cladding it with something or you are wanting a, a render mix, I, I think, I think, it should be used more here because it, it just seems like a lot of waste on the um, the vertical poured in place concrete. You know, the amount of materials that go into forming it all, and then it all just gets ripped off and thrown away. Yeah. Uh, I, I was actually having a conversation with a landscape architect about it today. You know, we're just talking about he's from Germany, so I was trying to 
get an idea of what they do there. And he, he, he said he's also surprised by how much, how much they do here. Yeah. yeah what, do you guys use architectural like board in place um, walls or block work? We do well? both. Yeah. yeah. So we, yeah, we'll do retaining walls, uh, block, block work. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's, uh, but the, the, the architectural concrete is more like a feature piece. It's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Because I think it looks really good on, um, for flat work. Like it looks good. It's, I'm just, when you're not going to have that as the finish, I think that the block work might be the way to go. It just, you know, I haven't really crunched the numbers on it, but that's my gut feeling on it. Mm. Um, but I do, I love the, um, the port in place uh, pathways and the steps, you know, with the reveal that you were, you had a guy on, um, was it Hungry Wolf Studio? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've, so I follow, follow them on, on social media. And I think there's another one that you guys might've mentioned in the chat that I also uh, follow. The other one, the, the, so the, there's two main ones that I know of and the other one's Concrete by Keenan Harris. That's right. Yeah. So both of them I follow too. L like love that stuff. You know, Yeah. I, I've tried experimenting with some tables and uh, fire pits and stuff like that, you know, steep learning curve, but yeah, it's all fun. I, I just love, I just, I'm just so interested in all that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, Ollie from Hungry Wolf is doing a course. Like he mentioned it in his episode as yeah. well. So, um, yeah, I'm I signed up. <laughs> yeah. I heard about yeah, it. So I signed up and I was like, oh, I, is it virtual? I hope so. Otherwise I'm going to have to yeah, yeah. cancel that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah that's going to be awesome because uh, yeah i'm the same like I, my concrete skills aren't great um and they're not good enough to do work like that so um yeah yeah and something i'll practice at the back of my shed a couple of exactly. times exactly yeah and, me too um so you break <laughs> it up and then yeah then when you're good enough you can put it in a real situation yeah exactly i mean the ones we did i actually did a table and a and a fire pit for a client but they just we did so much work there and they were like hey do you want to do this or can you do this and i said look i'm sure we could figure it out do you want us to try and they said yeah go for it and you know luckily it worked out we had a couple <laughs> a couple runs that didn't work out so well but uh got it in the end and it's yeah it's a it's a good one i, I like the reverse engineering aspect of it you know building the forms to the shape that you want and that's where i found sketchup so useful is because i can actually draw it how i want the finish and then i just attach the pieces and reverse engineer how the forms need to be to the exact measurements and i don't have to try and figure it all out on a piece of paper or something you know so yeah, yeah I, actually, I, I built a, uh, a curved timber bench seat one stage and i was trying i couldn't work out how to get the diameter how to cut it into the timber so i yep. drew it on landworks cad and printed it out like real size and then i oh, cut wow. that out and put it on the, <laughs> cut, sticky taped it together and put it on right. there get a timber trace and it worked well yeah it worked perfectly nice yeah <laughs> probably there's probably easy ways to do it with measurements and all that sort of thing but um yeah yeah yeah. Works. yeah i sometimes think that like have i done this the quickest way i, don't, I, yeah. I found a way you know <laughs> yeah that's it so was it do you have in um london is there any free store like it you have in vancouver or do you have that in uh, vancouver? no it was never i never remember it being mentioned much and where where we are in vancouver is actually it's pretty mild climate it's actually very similar to london it's like a because oh. we're right by the water it's it's yeah. very temperate you know as soon as you go inland an hour or two it's a different story you know yeah way more snow on the ground in, in winter where we same as london maybe you'll get a couple of days where there's snow on the ground uh but not too much it's it's oh. more uh, rain rain is the concern you know really wet winters so yep. yeah the free store thing doesn't come up that much so do you can you work through winter yeah pretty much um okay, cool. yeah it's it's just obviously a few days get rained off because it's raining so badly uh and then if there's snow on the ground of course but it's overall you, we work straight through and it's something i used to say in london as well that the uh the climate is actually quite suited to landscape construction i think because most of the year is actually comfortable you know t-shirt or hoodie and that maybe a couple weeks are too cold and a couple weeks are too hot but that's it you know i, I couldn't imagine doing landscaping in south africa like where <laughs> you know yeah. it's just so hot and and parts of australia like i don't know how guys do it up in queensland far north queensland like how do they yeah how do they work in that yeah you know? we my old boss tried he started up the business in queensland as well as down in uh, victoria where where i am uh, yeah. And we went up there to help me out with a job for a couple of weeks. And it was in the middle of winter. And I got up at six o'clock in the morning and had to single it on straight away. So, <laughs> yeah. So it was probably like 24 degrees in the middle of winter in yeah. the morning. So, Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you get a lot of, because I know a lot of the North American podcasts I listen to, they talk about having to do snow plowing or shutting down over um, yeah. the winter period. So do you get a lot of workers coming into work for you in that period of time because they can't work where they are or anything? Oh, no, no, I haven't noticed that. Um, I guess guys I know that are from sort of interior, 
talked about how they uh, they did snow removal all winter kind of thing. Um, they do have like a few of the companies out here do have snow removal uh, contracts, so they kind of pray for it. You know, maybe we'll get like I said, a few odd day here and there, maybe a week's worth of snow, whatever. So there are some companies who are prepped for that. Like I have no interest at all in doing that. I hated it when I, the company I worked for did have a contract with the airport and like you just it get out. Like like, one okay. of the worst jobs ever. Yeah, ever. yeah like 2 a.m. You're on standby this weekend. So just wait for the call. Like what? 2 a.m. Okay, go out to the airport and start shoveling snow. It's like, no, thanks. So I, I have no, <laughs> no desire to do that whatsoever. So how long ago was it that you started out on your own in Vancouver? Uh, so I think that, I think we're in five years now, five maybe just over five. Yep. And what um, size business do you have? Like how many staff? Uh, so we are sticking at around four or five. I kind of am a bit flexible with um, uh, laborers. I can get. Um, we've got like an app here where you can kind of just book them in for a week or a few days here, so we can kind of crew up if we need it, um, and sometimes sub trades. But yeah, it's also quite reassuring. That's why I love the podcast so much is like hearing guys talk about that's actually a comfortable number to be with and like, cause I'm happy, <laughs> you know, and I yeah. think, oh, I should grow. It's like, mm, well, maybe not because maybe I want to sort of do a bit more with the design side and just keep the, the install crew at the same as it is. I'm, everything's seems to be kind of working nicely. You know, I don't want to change it just yet. So maybe just get my processes perfectly refined and be very confident before trying to expand. Cause it sounds like we talk about that between five and 20 is a danger zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you experienced and, and that? Are you, are you medium no, sized? I've got, I've got three at the moment and I was looking to put on a new apprentice, but I'm not, not sure if I will get any applicants yeah. worth putting on. But um, I haven't had any more than four on at one time, I don't think. Um, yeah. And yeah, like you say, people always plan on growing, but it's all, it's growing is fine if that's what you want to do. But you yeah. know, there's no point doing it just because that's what other people do. Yeah, exactly. And I was very conscious of like, I don't want to just grow too quickly. And then I'm taking on top of projects that I don't want to be doing. I'd rather like nail down the type of projects and, and only be doing sort of these high end projects and then maybe grow at that. But even if I don't, I'm happy to just do only those and a smaller number of them, you know, one or yeah. two projects running at the same time is more than fine for me. Yeah. Cause that's the thing. If you do grow, then you got to do It's a balance on um, enjoyment versus making money because so, if you yeah. grow then you're going to have to take on jobs you don't want to do just to keep everyone working exactly um, yeah. so then the job satisfaction goes out and exactly what, what's, what's sounds like a lot of pressure <laughs> yeah yeah but who needs that so um do you have any plans on or do you work on site or do you do yeah design or? that's i'm trying to not do that but it's it's hard <laughs> yeah so uh uh I, I've had I've had good stretches of being able to not do it, I, um, uh, especially with the SketchUp thing. I, you know, I can get the plans quite detailed enough that I'm confident everything will go fine on site, kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely trying to step away from it and, and focus more on the just the overall project management and design side. Uh, but it seems like I do have to go back on site every now and then. And you know, I actually I do really enjoy being on site too. So it's so I just know that people always talk about working on the business rather than in it, you know, so I'm trying to get that side of it going. But again, I guess if you're doing design and project management, you are in it. It's like on it would be trying to grow it, I guess. Right. Is that, yeah, it's kind of yeah. what people are working on your um, processes as well. Yeah. Yeah. But where else is a lot of your work coming from at the moment? Um, like where the leads come from. It's yeah. mostly, uh, mostly Instagram actually. Instagram and then occasionally we'll do a few jobs for some landscape architects which are great because you know really high-end sort of things and and just good for the portfolio um, but a lot of it recently has been Instagram and and like I said that it's just such a good a good lead because they've seen the type of work they like it and sometimes they'll say oh we've been following for months or a year and, and now we now we're ready it's like that's perfect that's exactly what I want so good good type of leads and I, I heard you guys talking about um you know, if someone contacts you, say, I found you on Google or whatever, it's not quite the same. And I, and I think I registered my business on Google just because I got emails saying you should do that. And I did. And, and now I am starting to get those calls as well. And I'm like, I wonder, have they actually looked at the website or Instagram? Because I want them to. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you can obviously get good leads from Google, but the percentage yeah. wise compared to someone coming from Instagram who's seen what you do and would have yeah. a, an idea on what the value is going to be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's completely different. 
Yeah, yeah, I like the idea, and someone mentioned it, and I've heard this from others, of having a, almost like a questionnaire on your website, you know? So someone yeah. can at least go answer a few questions and you can kind of figure out, you know, where is it? Maybe they'll give you a rough budget. I know people don't always want to, but just a little bit more information about it, you know? Because sometimes the jobs are just too small. You don't really want to, don't even want to waste that much time going out there or anything like that, you know, trying to eliminate, you know, and this has come up as well, like the amount of time spent going to see jobs that nothing happens from it and you just kind of, you just got to try and, uh, you know, narrow those down if you can. Yeah, and you so you don't charge for quotes or consults or anything like that. No, but like you guys have chatted about a bunch. I'm in a I'm in some like Facebook groups um, with guys like business owners all across the US and Canada, and that, that comes up a lot. A lot of guys saying like you, you know you should do it and we should all do it. Um, so I think it's going to go that way, you know. And and as long as you can do it in a in a way where people understand the value, you know they can they can ask you questions the whole hour or something you know so they can get yeah. a good value out of it right if it's 75 100 bucks whatever it is and if they have looked at your website and like the work and there's a good chance they're going to go ahead with it you know that that can come off the design fee or whatever it's just as long as you're not definitely not wasting time it sounds like a great thing that hopefully more people implement and then yeah, yeah once if once a bunch of people are doing it everyone will do it. it's funny it's such a small amount i gave it a hundred dollars for, for your time like it's still not yeah. paying for your time but people everyone's still they're too scared to charge it but not one of yeah. my things reason i don't like i don't do it because sometimes i'll go onto a site and i'll get ideas straight away and it's just all flowing and then other times yeah. i've got no idea at the time i need to go away and think about it so yeah I'm too too worried about charging them and then thinking ah oh, now nah, i've got no ideas i'll I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry i don't know what you should do <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's pretty much it <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know what you should do, but uh, give me a hundred bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, with your design style, is it? Do, do you find that it's um, different to most other people around Vancouver? Because when I was looking through your Instagram, like when I looked through most people's Instagram, I can have an idea, even state to state within Australia, where where it's from, just by looking at the pictures. Uh, yeah, and it's the same with like North American um, pages. I can I can tell that they're yeah. from there, but your, yours it's kind of a mix. Some some are obvious and some you wouldn't know where they're from. Yeah, uh, I don't really know if I have a set style. It's all it's all just been like following people and picking up styles I like. And that's why I mentioned I really, there's so many Australian companies that I follow because I just love the style that a lot of you guys are, are, are doing. It seems like there's so many companies that are doing a very high level of, of work. Um, so, and I think, I can't remember which it was first. A, a few design books I've got, like Jamie Jury and all that. Uh, you know, so I've kind of got familiar with the Australian thing. And then I used um, House, and I can't even remember if I used House in London or here first, but I just, when I started saving images, sort of nine out of 10 seemed to be Australian companies. And I, I still have so many saved. Like uh, you had the Steve on from Cos Design. Yep. And like, I think I've got maybe every photo he's ever put up <laughs> on House <laughs> saved in an idea book somewhere. Uh, it's just so... So I've just always been such a fan of, of the style and what, what can be done. And then, yeah, I just, so I don't know if that is influenced. I think when I do designs with people, I'll say like, if you've got any ideas, send them to me, like photos, house, Pinterest, Instagram, whatever. And then I have the same, I have a bunch that I think you might like and let's exchange those and then narrow it down a bit and then base the design off, off one of those. And, and usually that's, that's the way it goes. And there's, there's one project that's a favorite kind of thing. We try and do a little bit like that and, maybe change things up a little bit. So yeah, I guess it's all just influence of, of, of things I've saved over the years, I guess. Yeah, that's a good way of going about it as well. So you pick up little bits and pieces from here and there. Uh, yeah. And that, yeah, that makes it easy for you and to create the, yeah, because a lot of the designs you do look pretty cool. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> but, yeah, a lot of, uh, a surprising amount of pools as well. Because you know, people say in, yeah. in Victoria that we do too many. Yeah, no, the, obviously not yeah. that, that um, popular out here um but i remember in one of the facebook groups i was i was a member of someone commented like one of the designers who's a good designer saying like you really want to break into that sort of uh, the projects that have pools in them because obviously there's a big enough budget to do some good landscaping around it and, and that that kind of happened at the time i was doing a first project that it had a pool in it and so more has come from that and and uh, especially now there's so many inquiries of people wanting pools and, and uh, maybe smaller kind of pools and, and swim spas and hot tubs and things like that. But um, I, what I really like 
from what you guys are doing up in Australia, like the, the plunge pools and the smaller, yeah. the smaller pools that are like partially out of the ground. Like I really like those. I'd love to start doing stuff like that here. I just think yeah. and especially being if you're not smaller, using a huge pool all year round, a smaller pool is a way better option. So I think it would be good. Yeah, it, easier to heat as well. Yeah, for sure. Like a lot of the pools that we're putting in there, or not we're putting, but we're working on those yeah. uh, pool builders put them in. They've got heat pumps hooked up to the to the gas meter so they're pumped it costs a lot to run them but uh, yeah. it increases the amount of time throughout the year that you can use the pool for sure yeah yeah and and a lot of them are like a, a feature of the garden as well so with, with yeah. the window or, or sticking out of the ground slightly so it yeah. looks good even while you're not using it exactly it looks great like the mosaic tiles or whatever you know just looks so good with some steps leading up and some planting around it i, I just love the look of it yeah. definitely want to try that out so have you, have you got any mentors or anything that you get advice from or is it all just pretty much self-taught? Uh, it's all self-taught, but like, I am, I'm definitely like listening to a lot more um, podcasts and audiobooks and stuff now. And I definitely want to try and find like a business coach or something, but sometimes it might not even be industry specific. It's, you know, so I don't have anyone in particular like that, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about trying to get some, business coaching or, or something along those lines, you know, just see, see if there's any value in that. I mean, I assume there is, it sounds, it sounds like I'm, I, I listen to so many podcasts and it keeps coming up as a thing that you should be doing, you know, if you want to get good at something like sports, you've got to have a coach, right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. Well, yeah. It's something I've been starting to think about more and more as well. Now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I think I've said it in one of the other ones episodes, but I'm a, more, a landscaper more than a business owner. A business yeah. Owner. I'm yeah, a lot better at landscaping than I am running a business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's for, the majority of us. <laughs> yeah, I've been going for 15 years, so not, not too bad at it, but still, they could, there's a lot of improvement that could be had. Yeah, yeah, and 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 just like the, the system side of things, like I, I just think I don't know if there's a you guys have many software programs and things like I've just recently signed up for one, which is more of a like your budget and your estimating and, and the timekeeping, the guys can log in uh, and track the hours on an app and all that. Just all that, that sort of stuff that automates as much as possible of that admin side. I'm like, I'm all about, I'm open to any suggestions on that sort of stuff, you know? So I'm, I'm researching that sort of thing. And I think maybe that's where the, the business coach would help, yeah. you know, just try and take away as much of that as possible off your plate kind of thing. What's the program that you just started using? Uh, it's called LMN. Yep, I don't know. Heard that a lot. Have you heard of it? Yeah. It's, not it's really good. From, yeah, North American ones. Yeah, so the, it's, it's not available there, did you say? Or uh, I'm not sure, but I've heard everyone uh, here using it, but I've yeah, heard a lot of people. Uh, in, yeah, yeah, I think it's Canada. taken off like, the chats in these in these groups I've mentioned and and just noticing, you know, who, who's using it locally. I think it's getting getting pretty big. It's, it's really helpful. It's, it was a big help for me, you know, just finally, look, I think I, <laughs> I think I signed up and was paying the membership for a year before I actually like, Okay, let me try and actually set it up. <laughs> so <laughs> two years into it, paying for it, and one year into using it. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of things like that. It's uh, like with the accounting program that I'm using. There's a lot of work getting it set up to start with, but then it's yeah. easy from there on. Exactly. Yeah. So he's got to put in the time to, at the start. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do, you have, do you have your own uh, machines and equipment for that sort of thing, or do you get yep. some contractors in? No, uh, we've rented a couple times, but uh, I think the nature of our projects often seem to be like, you know, deck is the main component and we don't really need a lot of heavy machinery for, for excavation and that sort of stuff. So occasionally we'll do a driveway or something like that and, and we'll just rent one. But I definitely can't keep a, a machine busy full time. and I don't even want that, that headache. So I'll just, you know, factor that into the quote and <laughs> rent it and someone takes it away and that's perfect for me. I'm not, I'm not really keen on having loads of equipment and trucks and all of that that I have to worry about. It's just not... It's not something I want at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've always rented as well. Every time I start to think of, well, oh, maybe I should buy a machine because I'll use, I can might hire it um, twice a week for a month. So that would, I would well and truly make the repayments on what I'm paying yep. to rent it. But then uh, towards the end of that hiring period, one of the machines breaks down and the hire company just comes out and replaces it. So they go, yeah, that's that's not going to happen if I own it. I'm exactly. It <laughs> you know, yeah. Then you've got to rent one while yours get fixed. And, yeah. yeah, you just add, add the amount to your quote, and then you're not losing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree. Um, the only thing I think of is that you'd, you'd use it more if you had one, but um, but yeah. So then, that it could be worthwhile. But yeah, I, just, I need to keep 
trying, not talking myself into getting one. Yeah. <laughs> so have you got uh, what sort of project do you do? Are they what sort of um, you know are they all over a certain amount of dollars or? No, uh, but I'm starting to get to that point where I think there should be like a minimum because I just find these smaller ones sometimes are. Uh, I don't want to say a headache, but like it can be by the time you mobilize and get everything there. And, and, and I just, I feel like, you know, a month at least is, is a comfortable place to be at. So I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, maybe 30 grand and up or something like that, but they tend to be now they're getting into that point where it's sort of 30, 40, 50 up to maybe 150 at the most. I don't know if I want to go any bigger than that. Like, I don't know if I'm, we're really sort of set up for that. And I also, there definitely comes a point on these bigger ones where you're just re ready to be done and start a new one. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I don't want to be, you know, six months on the same project. It's nice to uh, keep it flowing a bit, especially um, when you want the photos for, you know, for Instagram or something like that. It's like, I don't want to wait a year for one more project to take photos of. So I, I kind of like that, that sort of zone. Uh, but sometimes we, we'll get inquiries for, you know, like a decking around a hot tub or something. And I just, I like that so much yep. that I do just take the smaller job on because I, I know, you know, we, we enjoy the working with hardwoods quite, quite a lot. And so maybe if that one component they want is right up our alley, then yeah, we'll take that. I think we're talking about your hardwood decks again. Uh, I didn't notice a lot of your decks. You plug the screw holes. Do you do all of them? Uh, yeah. So there's a bunch of uh, fasting systems and I, this is one thing I've actually noticed with Australian photos I've kind of zoomed in and it seems like that's not a thing there like everyone has stainless steel screws and it's but there's yeah. no hidden fastening systems or there's or there some, are yeah there are there's a couple them. but it's not, okay. not as common yeah yeah there's a few here so th that system's called pro plug and uh it's you know you get a countersink bit with a the pilot hole attached and it'll it'll set it to the right depth and then the, the pack of hardwood plugs whichever hardwood you're using and you just glue it in and, and whack them in so it's a bit time consuming but it's it looks really good and um, yeah but there's a, there's other systems now where it's like a sort of a jig thing that clamps to the board and it'll you can pilot hole and, and put a screw through and a 45 through the edge yeah so we've been using those it's actually really quick um and really strong you know so there's there's a bunch of um i think it's all from the, the states you know there's so much competition there with um composite brands as well so they bring out new systems and everyone's kind of competing so the, those things are just getting better and better it's, it's actually quite difficult to keep up with the different brands and, and systems that are coming out but I, it's nice to experiment with them all yeah it looks so much better as well like there's a job we did for a designer and um you got some photos taken of it and they photoshopped all the screws out of the oh really <laughs> <laughs> so that's, a, that's one way of doing it yeah 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 <laughs> uh, do you get any work from designers or it because you design your own it's all uh, so yeah, it's a couple of landscape architects. We've just started a project for one, uh, which is a nice big pool project again. Um, but yeah, not not so much from any other designers. Uh, it's mostly, like I said, um, the Instagram leads that I get and and word of mouth. And I, I've got definitely got jobs through other landscape companies because, um, like I said, everyone knows everyone, and I was kind of known for doing the decks at that company I worked for, and so people were aware when I started my own thing. So if companies don't do decks uh they have gotten touched to sub out in the past so yeah and do you have to have a building license or something similar to do landscaping and or decks uh yeah you've got to have um uh a, no a business license sorry not a building license so like a business you've just got to register it, but I've, I've heard you guys talking about that as well we don't have that is that a new thing that you guys have you've got now no, no it's been around you've for, had it for a while? yeah at least uh Probably 15 years but it's just it's, oh, okay. grad, it's gradually being more policed okay yeah, so, you, so have to, still, you have to do a test or something or qualify for it somehow yeah like my application was 140 pages so oh, wow. it's basically so you've got to show your business like you know what you're doing with the business and also um that all your uh, practical skills and knowledge okay. that's right interesting there. And, yeah, then, we don't... and then you get interviewed by someone who's on the on the board wow um, <laughs> a fair bit in it um but still like in yeah it, in geelong where i am so our population is like two hundred fifty thousand. there there's probably there'd be like maybe 120 or 150 landscapers and they'd be less than 10 percent have got their building license so oh yeah, it's still there yeah, it's still even though it is required it's not policed a lot it's yet. not policed oh, okay yeah. 
but you can get into a lot of trouble if you do get caught or what's the it's one of those things if something goes wrong then oh okay then sort of look then into it trouble. Think, oh yeah you've got no leg to yeah, stand yeah. on because you don't have this yeah um, yeah but, no we so, just need a business license and your insurance and stuff like that and and um uh work safe bc you've got to be registered with them they, they do like the monitor the health and safety on work sites and stuff like that and you pay yep. premiums so if there's any injuries employees can yep. get paid but that's yep, that's all same kind of thing yeah what about permits you have to get permits for the decks or uh, you, yeah if it's um anything over two two feet above above the ground above a uh, grade needs yep. a permit and yeah obviously like second story ones and, and certain things like that pools obviously all that sort of stuff but yeah not a lot for what what we do in, until you start going the second story decks or the anything a bit higher that needs railings and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your, what are your plans going forward? Is there anything you're wanting to do that you're not doing currently in terms of, uh, of jobs or. Yeah. A lot, I, I constantly got ideas and things like I was saying, the plunge pool thing would be cool to get into. I think, you know, it might be a bit daunting at first, but I, I really like that idea. I think there's, there would be a market for it. Uh, I'm, I'm, wanting to do more of the design stuff we're getting more and more design inquiries which is great so almost think about having two sort of teams you know like a bit of a design team well, not i say team maybe someone to help out and then the construction side so maybe refining the design process i think because my my stuff is all just like 3d and it's screenshot images and it's more of like a concept but if i actually want to have proper 2d plans made up uh that can we can do construction work off of and all that so i, I think just refining that uh design side of things and then, uh, yeah, just I'm just always open to doing new things, which sometimes is a double-edged sword, you know, never knowing how long it's going to take to do it, but I, it's always so much fun. So, uh, yeah, that's, just... It sounds like just that's how you got here in the first place, by, you know, doing things you weren't quite knowing how to do, but then yeah. you get something like it and you just keep, keep yeah. growing your knowledge. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, it can be expensive <laughs> to do that because you just really like the, the main thing, like knowing how long things are going to take. is just such a critical yeah. and constantly trying to do new things. Like how am I yeah. supposed to estimate how long this is going to take? So that's, yeah, well, <laughs> that's an ongoing battle. But uh, yeah, we're getting there with that. Um, but yeah, I think I'll always want to do new and interesting things, right? Try yeah. to push yourself a little bit, and learn more. Yeah, if you're not sure how long something takes, just ask me. I'll tell you how long it takes, and it's double however long I say it takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm used to that. Yeah. Which is not, not a good thing when you're quoting jobs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> so is, that, is that how it works over there in terms of you do quotes as well? Do you quote the job and then... Yeah, I've, I've typically done a uh, fixed price all the time, but then there's certain things where you just realize it can't, you know, like the excavation or, or de demoing of concrete and stuff. You never know how reinforced it is. So yeah. there's some stuff where I'll just say, look, we're, we don't, we'll do it at cost plus because I don't particularly want to do it either. <laughs> so I don't want to yeah. lose money on it, but we'll help you yeah. out. So I'm definitely trying to do that. Uh, but I, I don't, I'm, I'm not such a fan of that because it always feels like you're under pressure and the client is, you know, yeah. conscious of how long you're taking. Like I much prefer it when it's a fixed price and you don't have to worry about it. You see someone having a coffee, like you're not gonna, yeah. why is he not working? Um, so yeah, I, I prefer a fixed price, but yeah, I've, I mean, it's really hard getting it too accurate sometimes, you know, I'm sure you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what are the other podcasts you're listening to, like wh whether they're landscaping or, or not? Yeah, there's one, um, the one was called uh, Landscape Disruptors, which, yep. I've, I've heard of or found out, I think because LMN is, is they sponsor, you know, so that software yeah. company sponsors them. And so the, the guy who started LMN has actually hosted a few shows on there. So I found that quite interesting. And the other one is run by a, um, a concrete paver company called Teco Block, which is quite popular in, especially on the East Coast of, of North America. And yeah. that one, what is it? On Hardscape Growth, it's called. Yeah, yeah. You know that one? Yeah. yeah, I'll listen to both of those as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so another canadian one uh how to hardscape so, oh is there oh i haven't heard of yeah. that one. I, I should look it up yeah, yeah it's I, a, it's I really a good one. listening to all of them not all the episodes of that one are relevant to me because a lot of it is talking about you know the type of base that they use and open graded so, yeah, yeah yeah so it's yeah. good for us people in north america a lot of the episodes yeah. but there's other ones that are good for anyone yeah um, but i find that if that's the thing about podcasts like you're not going to get 100 percent value out of every single episode but you find there's little bits and pieces that you can pick up along the way that yeah is, yeah is value yeah i mean i i, I think you 
you you learn something, right? It's just like you definitely. It's just nice. It, it's it feels like you're just sitting at a table listening in on someone's conversation that you would, you know, want to be a part of anyway. So it's it's great. I, I really love them. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like when I um asked the question before about if you got a mentor, and then you started talking about um podcasts, and that that made me realise that that's almost like a new way of having a mentor is you got all these different ideas from people that you're picking up yeah. bits and pieces from. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, and, and like you was um, was it um, John a couple of episodes back? You guys were talking about Gary Vee and all that. I was like, ah, yeah. yeah. These guys are listening to the same things I'm listening to. Like, I, you know, I listened to so much Gary Vee. It actually made me think, ah, I haven't listened for a while. I should download a bunch of those and listen on the drives and into work coming up. Just uh, just more of that sort of mindset stuff. Sometimes, you know, it's actually yeah. good listening to those too. Yeah, it makes you realise that things aren't as bad as they seem. That can be yeah. as good as you want them to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, David, thank you very much for your time today. I've really enjoyed chatting. And yeah, it's, it's interesting seeing how similar things are, even though they're different, but yeah, it's pretty much yeah, yeah. very similar industry. So yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. No, thank you.